Terminal chat in Windows Terminal is going open source. Turbo Pascal turns 40. The advent of code 2023 is here and a pick of the week that will keep you warm and blissed out. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub, and this is the show where we cover open source projects and the latest developer news. Please like and subscribe. Um, my hoodie this week is of uh, the University of Georgia Bulldogs, who, as I'm recording this, and so depending on what happens on Saturday, this could be wrong, but they are, are still undefeated for the season, and so two-time national champions. I'm, I'm from Atlanta, I have to root for the dogs. That's just how it works. So that's, that's my shirt this week. I got feedback from some of our viewers on our last episode that said that there was too much AI news. I hear you, it is a really big topic, but I promise we've got other news that we're gonna talk about too. So let's just go ahead and get into that. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is um, a blog post from Alvaro Munoz on the GitHub blog about doing a code review on Home Assistant. And Home Assistant, if you're not familiar, is an incredibly successful open source project that will help you basically manage your smart home. And so what I really like about it is that if you're anything like me, you have a bunch of different devices, you know, some are like for, you know, Amazon's ecosystem, some for Google's, some for Apple's HomeKit, if for whatever reason you're like me and you weirdly buy things that are HomeKit compliant, even though HomeKit is terrible. Well, what is not terrible is Home Assistant. And so Home Assistant lets you manage all of those things together and also manage all the other devices in your home. So it's a very cool project. And our security team, because so many of us on our home labs use Home Assistant, decided to go ahead and do a code review. And uh, I've got the blog post linked in the show notes in the description down below that goes into the details of how they went through that code review, what vulnerabilities um, and potential problems they found in the project, how they submitted those vulnerabilities back to the team, how wonderfully the Home Assistant team was able to respond, and, and just going through the whole process. I think it's a really great example of A, why I think code reviews are important, and, and B, kind of the value um, of working within um, open source ecosystems so that when things are found and when people look through stuff and things can be audited, we can be as secure as possible. So uh, thanks Alvaro for that great blog post and thanks to the Home Assistant team for being so cool. So links to all that are in the show notes and the description. The next thing I wanna talk about, yes, this does have to do with uh, AI stuff, but I think that it's worth mentioning because it also has to do with open source stuff. So back at Microsoft Build 2023 in May, the Windows Terminal team, and, and these are some of my favorite people on the planet, they announced, um, a, a, I guess, kind of an alpha or preview of something called Terminal Chat, where you can basically use natural language to talk to your terminal and get things back. It's, it's similar in some ways to the GitHub Copilot CLI. Um, well, the team has decided to go ahead and make this uh, plug-in feature open source and so this is now something that is available on github that they are wanting feedback uh, from the community on like basically what do you think of the experience as it exists now what changes and um, what you want to make do you have any code contributions you would like to share this is now part of the windows terminal process and windows terminal is also being developed out in the open so i really love seeing this i've got a link in the show notes in the description for um, how you can uh, play around with terminal chat which is now on the canary build of windows terminal as well as how you can contribute back if you have your uh, your own, you know, wants or needs or feedback that you want to give that team. So that's really, really great stuff. Moving on to some very cool anniversaries. The first one I'm going to start with is from Turbo Pascal, which was uh, created originally by Anders Helberg, who uh, you might know as one of the you know lead architects behind C Sharp and the co-creator of TypeScript, and and a very very cool and important guy who's still doing amazing language work today. Well, 40 years ago, he worked for a company called Borland and created Turbo Pascal, which was. Uh, basically one of the very first popular integrated development environments, or IDEs. Um, we take it for granted now in our, our world of JetBrains and VS Codes and Xcodes and Visual Studios and, and everything else, but uh, there was a time when you had to have a bunch of separate tools to do all of your development work, and Borland and, and Turbo Pascal really helped kind of change uh, the game on that. So Turbo Pascal turns 40 um, as, as of, I think, like late November. Um, so happy birthday, and, and thank you for everything that came out of it, um, not just from Andrews, but from, from all the people who are working on that stuff. So I've got links in the show notes in the description to 
a Wikipedia page about Turbo Pascal and some blog posts uh, about it, as well as um, some talks that some of the contributors um, have given over the years. I think it's really, really cool. The next thing I want to talk about, and this is actually going to be our project spotlight, is that Notepad++ celebrated its 20th anniversary and just released its 20th anniversary release. So Notepad++, if you're not familiar, is a completely free and open source um, a text editor. Uh, really, you know, I, I think that you could maybe make the argument it's even a little bit more powerful than, than just being pure text editing. A lot of people use it as an IDE because it'll do everything but basically, you know, run your, your code for you. And uh, Notepad++ has been around for 20 years. And so this is a Windows application that in many ways is similar to the, you know, Notepad app that we all know and love that comes included with Windows. But with syntax highlighting and a lot more features. And Don Ho has been the primary developer of this app for 20 years. It's fantastic. Um, there's now a bunch of contributors who contribute as well. Uh, and um, I've got a link to the anniversary um, um, blog post uh, announcing the, the latest release, as well as the GitHub repo. And this is a project that I, I think is just fantastic and it's, it's been great to see it continue on for so long. So congrats to, uh, to the Notepad++ team on that. And, and I can't believe that it's been 20 years because that means I've probably been using it for almost 20 years, and that's that's depressing. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is it is now officially December, which means that it is Advent of Code season. And so the Advent of Code, if you are not familiar, is an Advent calendar where every single day, starting December 1st, there's a new coding challenge, and um, it, they get progressively harder the more you go along. I think this is a great way, whether you're a beginning coder or somebody who's just trying to keep sharp or somebody who just you know enjoys puzzles, this is a great thing that happens every single year. So I've got a link to that in the show notes in the description. And one that I actually found today on Reddit is called code24.no, and so that's K-O-D-E 24.no. And the reason I like this one is because it is like very 90s themed. And so the entire interface is, and, and even the tasks are, I think they base them on what I'm guessing we're all assuming were tasks that people would have to do in the 90s. I don't know because I didn't actually work on code in the 90s. I mean, I like built like, you know, HTML pages, but I was, young, so I, I don't have the experience that way, but I love the aesthetic. Um, it's also supposed to be a little bit easier than Advent of Code. So I've got links to both of these things in the show notes down below, but I'd also love to hear your feedback on um, what sorts of coding challenges or, or celebration things you like to do each year. So we've got links to all that down below. And now, speaking of uh, 90s themed things, it is time for my pick of the week. So. This is actually technically an early 2000s themed thing, uh, but I think that most of us can agree that the greatest operating system of all time is Windows XP. And uh, that was released in October of 2001, which means that according to our YouTube analytics, some of the people who are viewing this very uh, video that I'm making were not alive when Windows XP came out, which again, I don't like to contemplate, but also thank you for watching. So um, as is annual tradition now, uh, the, uh, the Microsoft team released some ugly sweaters um, uh, themed around Windows. And this year the theme was the famous Windows XP Bliss background, which was the name of the, the background photo of these rolling hills. That was a, you know, an actual photograph and probably one of the most viewed photographs of all time. And so the sweaters are sold out. Although I would keep an eye on the Xbox Gear Shop because from time to time they do actually bring them back in stock. Um, you would get them after the holiday season, but they've done that the last few years for the ugly sweaters. They're sold out. However, the reason I'm still making this my pick of the week, um, and I will be, I did get one, I will be wearing one on camera um, a, a, as soon as I get it in. The reason this is my pick of the week is because I think that the, the team did just a bang up job, not only creating some like lo-fi like beats that kind of go along with the Bliss aesthetic, but also having really fun wallpaper and some other stuff around this on um, their landing page. So um, Windows XP is my favorite operating system ever. And, and I say that as, as a very dedicated Mac user, uh, I love the new design of this sweater. I cannot wait to wear mine, um, both on camera and at, at holiday gatherings here in Seattle. No one's going to question why I have like a computer themed ugly sweater. So um, links for that are in, in the show notes down uh, below. Let me know what type of, um, ver what version of Windows you wanna see on an ugly sweater next year. I think if we wanted to get really ugly, we could just make like a Windows like Vista sweater, but that might be, that might be too soon and that might be too on the nose. Let me know your thoughts about that or any of the other stories we covered in the show notes, uh, excuse me, in the comments down below. 
that's going to do it for me this week. If you like this episode, please give us a like on YouTube. It helps us out. And subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all your nerd needs. See you next time.